Nacho, güey. Hey guys, this is Coach Clay here, back from Unmatched Nutrition. What we're going over today is we have Suzette Henderson here. And if you want to find her on Facebook at Suzette Henderson, or if you want to find her on Instagram, it's this underscore is underscore Suzette. And we're talking about therapy work today. No, not mental therapy, although it might help. We're talking about uh, like physical therapy, uh, massage therapy. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different names for it. Everybody nowadays seems to be on this grass thin kick uh, where the number one question that I get asked is, hey, does your therapist do grass thin? Well, grass thin is a scraping technique and I'll have her go over more of the techniques that she does and why we do them. So uh, hopefully you'll follow along, listen up, maybe you'll learn some things today. So Suzette, let's get started with this. What type of therapy is there an out there and what do you provide with it? Well, I've been doing massage therapy is what my license says, massage therapist. I've been doing that for about 21 years now. Um, and there's just a lot of learning and continuing education that's been done along the way, a lot of adapt adaptation to what people need. I have found that using techniques like ART, which is active release technique, um, whether you do the scraping, which is also known as Graston, um, I can throw some cups in there if you need to, but a lot of it just essentially falls in the category of deep tissue work. Um, people get a lot of pain, really bound up, especially in this sport. There's these chronic nagging pains that eventually lead to injury if not taken care of, and that's what I've always done. Um, I've worked with a lot of professional athletes. I've worked with collegiate athletes. This has always been my field, my passion, and, and I've got to put my hands on quite a few of y'all already. Yeah, uh, so to let you guys know, she's pretty much our team therapist. Uh, she works on me. She works on my wife. She works on her other coaches. She works on 80% of our teammates. Um, the reason why I have continued with her is I have been to other therapy places. I've been worked on by many other therapists. Is Suzette gets down to the problem and keeps working. It's not go home and just do this. It's like, right, let me figure out what it is. All right, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm seeing from you. And... And I'm going to give a very good example of this. A lot of clinics nowadays, because I talked about grass and this is scraping. You go into a clinic and because you think you need grass and they give you grass and which is okay because psychologically they're giving you what you want. You're probably going to get some feeling better of it. But Suzette herself has always said, I'm going to give you what you need. And there's been days we've gotten in there. She does, you know, Starts off with like myofascial release, right? And then you get into making me cry and scream, and everybody can hear me yelling. So we'll just start with the <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then you know, all of a sudden, you know, we're thirty minutes in, and she brings out grass and tools, and she's like, "No, your back doesn't need it. What needs it is your IT band. Your IT bands need this right. now." Right. She doesn't do something just because. She actually tries to solve a problem. And I'll give you guys one of the major things I go through is. Uh, I squat in a circular motion, meaning I go down on one leg and I push up on the other. Yeah, you start to see that hip swivel, like one go forward first and then yeah. it comes back. Or if some people aren't coming down correctly, they get that little butt yeah. kick. That, that happens too, and, and that's all muscular imbalance. And that's, I can promise you guys, promise you, and I've told her many times, if I get my work done regularly, that issue goes away. But if I ignore it, it comes back. So let's talk about the purpose of somebody getting therapy work because a lot of people ignore this and don't realize this is as important part as your diet and your training are. That therapy work is important. And I'm going to prove it to you guys later in a picture that I posted up. It was two seasons ago, correct? Right, right. Uh, no, it was just last season. Last was, season, was, right before we headed into this off season. So it was last year. All right. Just was, last year. Yeah, so it was last year. Uh, I posted up a picture of some back work that she had just finished up on me. And I was a few weeks out from show. I think we were sitting about three to four weeks out at that time, but morning to post her working on me, which she usually, usually start at noon on me. So yeah. then it'll give you an idea. This is a four hour difference. And the only thing 
different in between there is the work I got one hour, done. One hour massage. Yeah. So let's go over what is the purpose of somebody getting work done? The main thing that I want to enforce and encourage is injury prevention. Right. Um, that's the best route to take. If you can prevent things from happening, smooth sailing in your lifting, in your day-to-day -day living, just not having to live with pain. Most people say, well, what do I, how, how often do I need to come in for injury prevention? Usually most people, maintenance is once a month. And when you're getting the work done, it, it also serves the purpose of reminding you, you know, you realize, oh, wow, I was really sore here, so I need to stretch this more. So it brings a greater self-awareness, too, if you take the time to get something done. So I'd say number one is injury prevention. But then that also leads into most people don't stretch. Most people right. don't do self, enough self-care. So now you're dealing with something, and, and I hear from people, it's like, oh, I've, I've got my low back is killing me, or my shoulder is killing me. Well, okay, let's, so now at this point, it's it's preventing, not only preventing the injury, but further, but let's turn this around. Let's get you back into a more corrected state so you can keep doing what you want to do, and then hopefully, you know, retrain muscle memory and pull that right back to the beginning so it's no longer a problem. Yeah, so when we work on injury prevention, that goes into adding in our stretching, doing other things that's going to continually make us better. Uh, one of the major things that I use you for is my range of motion. Yeah. And yeah. you notice when I don't use you regularly and like, let's say, during Christmas time. As Your hips lock up. Every, it, yeah, that's a big one. My, yeah. my yeah. hips. And something I've noticed is I have went from an endurance athlete, you know, 12 years ago to I wanted to be in the bodybuilding world. So I went from 171 pounds to now in my off season. I sit at 272 to 275 pounds usually. Yeah, and when you gain that sure. kind of weight, your range of motion and your center decreases, but also your center of gravity, so you're lifting differently, you're moving differently, right. it's not just your clothes fitting differently. Yeah, and, and that, that's, that's, she nailed it, is everything changes. Uh, so we're bodybuilders. I don't care if you're a bikini athlete, I don't care if you're a physique athlete, I don't care if you are a men's bodybuilding athlete. We are still trying to gain, maintain, and shape our muscles continually, which means adding, taking off, making sure we maintain a look because we're in a competitive yeah, field. Yeah, we're not doing something average. We're not just, you know, going to work and sitting at a desk. We're, we're doing something above and beyond so that that requires a little more self-care. Right. Attentiveness and, and injury the, prevention is huge. The biggest thing that I notice is people skip this portion until it's right. needed. And I'm, I'm going to call a client out, but he's also a very good personal friend of mine. And I love this because this is his first prep season is what I'm going to talk about. He's no longer on that amateur level now. I mean, he's won every show he did this year. Let's, you and Kevin Lewis. I know uh, you still work on him. Yeah, yeah. So the first time I was prepping Kevin. Fantastic example. Yeah. The first time I was prepping Kevin, he was bound up, couldn't open up his back, his one shoulder set high while we're posing practice, and he was not losing weight. Yeah, lats, he couldn't get his lats flared, couldn't get right. his shoulders back. It was just too condensed and too tight. And, and, and I'll, I'll say this on my behalf, I was putting a lot of muscle on him, working him really hard, and he has some of the best work ethic. Yeah, great gains. Yes. Yeah. And when you came in, you started working on him, I think three days following now, and I want to tell everybody he's been on the same macros and the same training plan. But three days following, he dropped weight, dropped weight, dropped weight. Yeah, he'd been stuck in a plateau for like two weeks. Just mm -hmm. it was he was so tight, and and, and and I know that he's not he's not the type. He's not going to be cheating on his diet. He's, right. he's no deviations for this guy. Right. He does following that. it to a T. The yeah. only difference was was he was bound up, came into me, got some work done, dropped nine pounds in three days. Yeah, and he did drop nine pounds, and his last spread went from not being able to open to completely Flaring, open a complete and complete open flare. Yeah. And the reason why I bring this up is because of the world we're in. We're in a competitive world, guys. We're out there to compete. If you're not getting this work done, you may not know it because he didn't know he had an issue until I said, look, I need you to see a therapist. This is what kind of work I want you done. I want her. This is, and, I, and I specifically said, this is who I want you to see. Why? Because I trust her. Because we, me, her, and Kevin can sit here and communicate together because she has no issue saying, All right, this is what's wrong. This is what I recommend. And, you know, we sit here and we talk about it. But Kevin came in, seen her, got his last spread open, and then maintained that therapy. Yep. And still maintains it today. Yeah, no, it's just a maintenance thing for him. Yeah. But, but also, I'm, I'm a competitor as well. So when someone right. says, I can't get this opened up, I know what that means. I know, right. okay, we need to look at this, this, and this, and go here. And, okay, maybe we'll get some elbow in here. Maybe we'll which, get some grass in here. Which I think we'll is very, this. very big. So I'm glad you said that. Because I haven't pointed this out yet. She is a top quality 
women's physique competitor. Really, really, really is. Uh, you can see the muscle she has now. Off season. <laughs> <laughs> but she knows how you need to look on stage. Uh, she is, she's certified in corrective exercise and nutrition. She does tons of sports therapy with all the people that we work on, but we don't concentrate. I hate the word sports therapy. I hate it personally. Yeah. Cause a lot of times sports therapy, if you're just a sports therapist, you're going to be doing a lot of active movement, move the limbs around, push, right. pull, lean into me, press into me. And sometimes you have to do the static compression. Right. Sometimes you have to get in there and wait till something releases. So it's. What I do is very adaptive to what you need. If if I'm looking at you and you're saying, okay, I'm I'm in the gym and I'm trying to do medial delts, I'm trying to do you know flies, and and I can't get my shoulders to come up, and there's a lot of pain right here, and and I can't lift it more than this. Okay, well let me see what you're doing. Right. Show me what you're doing. And sometimes you know what they don't understand is you have the tip of your scapula, your shoulder um, collarbone coming off here. And when you're trying to raise that, you're running into it and there's a nerve right under there. And so then you're pushing up into that. So, okay, let's try this instead. First of all, let's get your, you know, let's get all of the area of the whole delt released. We'll work on the subscap. We'll work on the, the infraspinase, the supraspinase. We'll also get that chest open up to make sure your shoulder is not in a dysfunctional position. Right. But then also what you need to do is try leaning forward, just have a slight lean forward so that you can clear the chromium process. So it's, it's like, okay, well, I can correct the muscular part of it, but now you need to correct the posture that got you into that place in the first, right. in the first place. And th this being that we ignore it, the biggest thing that I hear from people is, well, that's just a waste of my money. But let me put something into perspective for people. You're paying your coach whatever you pay your coach per year. You're paying for your, you know, your NPC card. You're paying for your IFBB card. You're paying, if you're at the NPC level, you're paying for your shows that you enter. Why are you not going to go up there with the best chance to win and leave something unturned? That's a stone that's unturned. That's just as important as your diet, just as important as your training. And I drive this home because, I mean, I, my pro body coach, how many times have you worked on Brian? Even he's not competing yeah. right now, and you still yeah. continually have worked on him. You've worked on, you know, this is a non, not getting ready for a show, not competing, pro bodybuilder, IFBB pro, and still getting work done because it's important to our posture. It's important to how we carry ourselves. It's important to, heck, I walk up 12 flight of stairs a day because I have a two-story home, and I have two kids that are, you know, <laughs> that up and down, up and down, up and down. It's not the same when I was 170 pounds being 250 today. I'm carrying 80 extra pounds and I'm trying to keep a little weight off right now because I'm not competing this year. But it's not the same. My body has to still have therapy to maintain this muscle, carry this muscle, and to keep me looking my best. But also, I train hard. We all train hard. If you're going in that gym and you're putting your body through that training, you have to give it therapy. What we do in therapy, and I'll let you correct me and then I want you to go more detail on this, is when we come in, in here in therapy, we're doing purposeful inflammation, purposeful technique that cause muscles to release by whether it's pushing, pulling, pressing, prodding, whatever it takes. I don't know the techniques. I couldn't go to you and give you what she can do. <laughs> this lady puts me in tears, but I can tell you those are my best days and weeks. And when I I've been on a we were until you've uh, once a week we were we were doing yeah, every well, Wednesday. And when I was in competing and show, and now I need to go back to that. And me and Sarah have both talked about, we need to get on back on our schedule because in everyday life, everything feels better. Like I bike a lot. I'm a, I cyclist a lot. Me and Sarah ride a lot. That is 10 times easier when your back's not hurting because you're leaned over. And you're not getting that pinch and the hip flexors right. because the IT bands are too tight and you're leaning forward too far. And right. Yeah. yeah it's, that's, so, but you're, you're correct in that. And that, People, when, when you're having this breakdown process and you've, you've produced extra metabolic waste, which happens, that's what we feel is pain, when you're, when you're producing extra lactic acid, extra uric acid, those are the chemicals that are registering your brain and give you that sensation of pain. So you already have a low-grade inflammation from the teardown process. But then when the muscles get so tight that you can't get proper blood flow in there, blood flow is the nutrition. That's how you get that nutrition to your muscles to repair that inflammation. So by whatever technique you're using, whether it's a cross fiber friction or the scraping or any form of active release therapy or trigger point work, anything you can do to, to free up those muscle fibers 
and allow that blood flow. So yeah, I am breaking down scar tissue, but that was already there. You know, yes, it can be painful, but if there were no pain, that would mean there's no problem. You would just feel it like pressure. So yes, it can be painful. It usually is. Yes. <laughs> People let it go too long. <laughs> yes, you're breaking down a chronic state of something that's already inflamed and, and toxic. I hate that word, right. but there's really no other. It's congested. Right. Um, you're getting extra blood flow in there. But that's also, as a competitor from the physical appearance, that's where you get the pump. Right. If you're too tight and you're too adhered and you can't get the blood flow in there, you can't open up properly. You oh, can't, yes. no matter how many carbs you're pushing into your system and how much glycogen you're trying to fill up in those muscle bellies, if they can't expand, what, what are they, what's it going to do? Right. Spill over into your skin? Would what, 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 not right. be effective? It's, and that's one of the major things you'll see on the photo that we're going to put right in this area here. And I'm going to have you, I'm going to show you this. I got brought the photo up. It's on my screen because okay. y'all see usually my phone's not in front of me, but I actually want her to see the photo because we're going to put this photo up here right now. And this is morning to morning. Mm -hmm. Obviously I've had, had the second one, but, uh, you can see here that where I took it the first morning compared to here. Yeah, so you were about three weeks out in this picture, I think we said. And yeah, you can tell that you're lean. You can tell that you're cut. Um, your right shoulder's a little bit higher. Um, the left one's rotated a little bit back more. But then after the work, which was about four hours later, so I saw you at noon. This was the one, the picture on the right is directly post therapy. I did do some scraping on that one in the mid back area, and you can see how. Every fiber, every striation, every detail has come out. His, his lats have, have completely filled up. Traps look insane. Um, again, that's mostly blood flow and freeing everything up. Um, the, po the pose isn't any different. This, the food's not any different. Right. And you, were, you weren't having a lot of food at that time anyway because right. you were so close to show. So the only difference is, is the massage that was done. Yeah, and, and the lighting's a little different, but the lighting is not more graceful in the second one. It's actually more harsh. Yeah. So you're not. it's not like, oh, it made you look better because it's actually a harsher yeah, lighting. Who looks good under fluorescent right. lights. <laughs> right. And uh, It's just showing the difference. But you can... The difference is so dramatic, and the one that I notice is in the trap area. Yeah. Look at the How detail full. and full that they came out, and then the side of the lats are actually protruding rather than just angling up. I remember a session I did with Kevin. He was having a lot of problems with that right yeah. side, and his pec wasn't filling up. So when he was laying on the table, and I was at his head looking straight down, you could see that one of his pecs was full and rounded, and one was really mm -hmm. flat. And just from doing that scraping work, it just... It just opened it came, back up. came right up, and it's it's it is that simple. So don't think just because you're having an ache and a pain, or you know, my, my back hurts. Well, those are warning signs, you know. And, and don't don't let it go until it is a problem. Problems are always expensive to fix, and they're always take more time and they put you out. You can't train if you're hurt. If you have a bicep tear or a labrum tear in your shoulder or you know yeah. your IT bands are jacked, you can't you can't train then and you, you're not gonna progress then. So now you have more problems. But right. but you know it's sometimes just little corrections, do a couple of sessions. Let's do one and a week later we'll do a follow up. And and usually I find in my history of doing this that the, the way that I work, most people are about eighty percent better on a day to day basis after just a couple of sessions. Right. So it is that dramatic of an improvement, and and I work hard. I work, I work hard on you guys. It's not that I'm just rubbing some lotion. Well, all right. Yeah, Sometimes it takes me climbing up on the table and putting some knees in your hamstrings. That's that's what we do. And I do so. want to say this: if your massage is relaxing. It's not the right massage for what we're doing right. here in this world. Yeah, there, the there's, bodybuilding atmosphere. There's a lot of therapists, and there's a lot. I know a lot of people have people that they like to go to. They they get good correction. Whatever you're doing, you know, do it. But as long as it's is, working. As long as it's working. But if it's just because it's someone you like, right. Or you feel bad I, not. Going I will to tell them. you, I have two other therapists that I'm very good friends with, and I have known them actually longer than Suzette. Yeah. I use Suzette for a reason and I'll go, to, I want to touch on one last thing is because we're in the bodybuilding world, something that I've noticed and maybe you can expound on this is, you know, my legs is my hammer point. I want bigger legs, want bigger legs. Yeah, this year, <laughs> <laughs> this year I felt going into, uh, my last, the end of this year, I was getting work done every week. 
I felt my legs were the largest they've ever been. They looked better than they've ever been. Held more vascularity, more fullness, more size. More you didn't even go train that night after we worked too. Mm-hmm. I remember because we, we both go to the same right. gym on certain nights and you were training legs that night and you, it, it changes how much weight you can lift too. If you're trying to grow, why are, are you stunting your own progress? Right. So it does have an your own potential. Growth. Absolutely. All right. Because that's, I noticed that. If you can't get a pump, how are you, that's, right. that's what a pump does. If you if you get that, that hard pump and a full muscle belly, you're going to be breaking down the fibers. Proteins fill that in. That's where we get our growth from is that process of tearing down and building up and tearing down and building up and tearing down and building up. And if you can't expand, you can't grow. And that's the biggest thing that I noticed. So if you're wanting a body part to be better and get better and you're having problems, this may be something that you need. I will tell you, I... I'll show you the difference of my legs this year versus a year ago. I have a shot from Universe a year ago where I'm getting ready for show. A little side by side comparison. Right. And then yeah. this year I have a shot where I'm just holding up one leg of my uh, shorts. Your legs are really good this year. And they were no, twice really as big good. now, twice as full, twice as vascular. It didn't even look like it's the same person's legs. Roadmaps. Uh, the veins were crazy. Right. So that's that's something I really want to drive home with you guys is the difference in everything was I told myself I'm not missing sessions. I'm going to be consistent in that I was. Every Wednesday, we had a session. I blocked it out on my schedule. That time was for me to come in here and get tortured. And then take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I actually did block out nap times too. She's not lying about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love this stuff. I'm so passionate about this. And this this, this stuff gets me really I don't want you back on here because I feel like this is just, what I'm doing here today is just touching the surface. I like people to ask questions. I like to get comments on what y'all want to hear yeah. about. Because like, and I, I'm going to go back into this, but every time I tell somebody that, hey, I got a therapist, it's, it's, does she do grass? And yes. Every good therapist does some type of scraping. Knows how to do adjunct therapies. Right. They know they're scraping. They know they're cupping. They know they're active release therapy. They're myofascia stretching. You know, all this different thing. They're myofascia releasing. They know this. The, The question is, do they use it at the right time for you? And when is the right time? How do you as a competitor know when you need something? And how do you know? And how do you know if your therapy is working for you? Uh, like me, mine, the mirror shows it, my body shows it. I feel great. However, I have other competitors. I have two that use a personal friend of theirs that they bartered with and they constantly are crooked in their posing. Yeah, they're still like us. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's still, it's you know, I think you seen one on pose the other day and, they, and yeah, and one yeah. was up like this, one's down and she kept doing it. And I kept telling you, you need to okay, I'm going to go to this person. Okay. I'm going to go to this person. Well, this is the thing you've been going to that person for a year with me now. I don't feel, and I don't know the person, but I don't feel that person is getting what I need from the competitor out of the competitor. I think that, and I asked them, I said, is it painful? I did it, ask them about the massage. Oh, no, it's, it's comforting. Well, if it's a, that's not a massage. You that's, can fall asleep in the wrong table. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's massage. relaxation. That's, that's, massage. <laughs> that's not massage therapy work. That's, that's spa work. That's, that's spa that's work. That's spa that's massage. That's and we use different things for different... Like, that's a mental release. I mean, I can light a candle if you need me to, right. but it's going to hurt. <laughs> but when she works on me, I feel like I did a workout. And that's why yeah. I tell people, they're like, man, how do you feel? Like, I just did a workout. And when I'm working hard, and I'm seeing a lot of people, you have to increase my calories. That's and, how hard I work. <laughs> and that's the truth. She'll be on 200 carbs, and all of a sudden, next week, she's down four pounds. I'm like, all right, we're going to 250 carbs. I remember, the time, I remember the time you said to me, you realize that, that I'm feeding you as many carbs as some of my guys. Right, yes. <laughs> like, Oh. <laughs> because that's More what, <laughs> right. That's what how hard she does work yeah. for you. Yeah. So, and I will. I'm going to vouch for her. That's why I brought her on here. I'd actually like to do more episodes with her. So, hopefully, you guys like it. This is under the product review section because that encompasses like the clothing that we did last week. Uh, it encompasses the massage work that we do. It encompasses the companies that we work with because they're independent contractors like her. You know, that's the same as Apex Clothing. Zach, the owner, is an independent contractor. He sells his clothing. It's him. That's her. She is her business. Yeah. So uh, I like bringing those people on there. I do vouch for anybody that I've I bring on here. Q&A, too. If, if yes. you have things coming up, because it's only... 
I really enjoy helping people do better and, and, and get yeah. more out of what they're trying to do. I hate people seeing that they're wasting their time right. and their money. It's like, okay, if it's not working, it's not working. Even if you have a question about, you know, I'm trying to lift something and when I do this, this hurts. Yeah, Why does this hurt? Let's talk okay, about let's that take a look at it. Yeah. Corrective exercise. That okay. would be an idea. That's something that you do. Yes. You're a nutritional coach, just as yes. I am. Yes. Uh, you're a bodybuilder, just as I am. I don't, she, work, I don't work with bodybuilders, though, for the nutrition. I leave that special. Right. right. She, I work she, with a lot of performance athletes. Performance athletes. And lifestyle. Yeah. Routine. She does a lot of performance and very, very good performance athletes, too. So, we, although I do performance athletes, I do fighters, I do triathletes, I do different things. I do people even just getting ready for squat school. Performance is a total different breed uh, than bodybuilding, and a lot of you don't realize that. Performance actually is more in detail, and that's that's a yeah. lot of people don't know that. Oh, they're putting me through the, the work right now, too, because yeah. I've got two that are vegetarian, one is pescatarian, one is vegan. Yeah, <laughs> so, so I'm just like, I'm writing plans. Right. And, and a lot of it's relying upon supplementation. That was a topic yesterday and, with... Yeah. Uh, we have a, a new person that is pescatarian, and I just have one of my coaches have a problem with awesome. so I just sit down and help them out. Yeah. Say, look, pescatarian is very simple. Just take your protein sources and the sources of you know fishes and yeah. seafood, and we're going to get through this because it's something you need to learn. One thing I've always appreciated, I've been with you two year, over two years yeah. now, is I've had my coached off seasons with you. I appreciate that you dig into the knowledge of things, that you want to get to the bottom of things and truly help people. Um, and, and you were so supportive of, of the team and, and just people in general wanting people to do better. And that was, that's a really unique thing right. for me. And that's, that's what keeps me with you is how effective you are, but yet how, how knowledgeable you are. And you're the same way. That's, that's like mind There's a like mindedness right. here. That's a really, really if there's different. a question, I actually go to her with questions all the time. And I mean that seriously, sincerely guys, if I, I have questions, I ask her she, same way she came to me with questions. And sometimes neither one of us knows, so then we start pulling our resources together, <laughs> researching it, because yeah. we are both people who want to know more, and, and that want allows people, us to help people more. to have results. Right, help us help people more. Yeah, exactly. Just, so, guys, Q and A is one hundred percent something that we can do. We can do a uh, YouTube live, even if you want, where you can, you know, we'll put uh, Sarah in here on the computer. You ask the questions, she'll sure. read the questions. Yeah. We'll field them with Suzette, and we'll get answers. If y'all want that, I promise you. She hasn't put one one thousandth of her knowledge out there, and you've heard probably more in this last 20 minutes than what you've heard about massage therapy, and I don't think we've even scratched the surface of it, so I would love to do that, and, and she does. That's why we I love, love working with her. Is it's As y'all know, bodybuilding is my passion. Anybody that knows me, sees me on Instagram, sees me on Facebook, sees me at shows, y'all all say the same thing to me as, man, you love this stuff. I live it, and I breathe it, and so does she. She just, her expertise is on this side, where it's on the side of therapy, on the side of getting you better. And she, her knowledge base expands mine by 2,000%. So uh, her knowledge is just bar none, at the top. And that's why she's here. That's why I've continued progress. One last thing. And that is, you know, constantly you need to pay attention to your health of your body, not just what we put in our body, but our muscles. And I promise you, the more you get work done, the more you get your body in a healthier state, your workouts become easier. You, A lot of people re-engage that excitement of working out again because you're setting new PRs, you feel better. Something major for me is my hip flexibility. When I'm consistently getting work, my squats go up and up and up and up and up. And I'm constantly making big gains. And that motivates me because I love to work legs. But I hate when I'm squatting down and you know I have 315 on a bar, I'm going down on one leg and my hips are coming around in that circular motion because one's off tilt. And that demoralizes the workout when I know I'm doing that. So think about this as a way to get yourself in there and to push yourself past your limits that you are now because you are gonna grow more muscle, you're gonna get better and it is definitely something that has helped. So now that we're getting off, I'm sorry about the break at the end, but... Uh